Welcome back everyone. So today we're taking a look at the disappearance of Kyron Horman. Kyron Horman. The disappearance of Kyron Horman has bothered a lot of people over the course of the last 10 years. Kyron was seven years old when he disappeared. And everyone from the get-go to now had been screaming at the top of their lungs. The stepmother had something to do with this. The finger was pointed at her directly then, and the finger is being pointed at her directly now, today. Her story about what happened, where Kyron went, and the, the events leading up to his disappearance have changed multiple times. She hasn't been able to stick with one set of facts from the day that he, he disappeared to now. Her attorney is now re refusing to answer any questions that have to do with Kyron at all. And it's the, the pressure has got to be building up with her. Her guilty conscience is, uh, has leaked out over the years, over the past 10 years, with statements and bizarre behavior, like dumping his belongings off at a charity, throwing a birthday party for him and not inviting anyone but herself and then posting pictures of it on her Facebook. But all of her social media accounts that we can find are now gone. She's ghosting you know, the world now because she knows that everyone is still looking at her. We're still looking and we still want answers for Kyron. Kyron Horman was seven years old when he disappeared. Her original story was that day, just like any other day in, in the middle of the week, she had taken Kyron, got him ready for school, and dropped him off at Skyland Elementary there in southwest Portland. That was her story. She said that was the last time she saw him, was when she took him to the school. No one at the school saw him that day. Matter of fact, no one in her community ever saw Kyron leave the home that day. No one saw him getting into the car. No one saw him get out of a car. No local businesses saw her car drive past on the way to the school or back. He just vanished. Where did he go? We don't know. But the one person in this world who knows the answers is most likely his stepmother, Terry Moulton, put Terry Horman. She has the answers. She has more answers than she's willing to talk about right now. Over the course of the last 10 years, she's been on and off again, talking to and wanting to communicate with the Multnomah County Sheriff's Department there in Oregon. But currently, she doesn't want to talk to him anymore. Now, that true crime writer, Rebecca Morris, has decided that she's going to release a book detailing the investigation into the disappearance of Chiron. In case you're not aware of who Rebecca Morris is, she's been a true crime writer for an awfully long time. She's won a lot of awards. Her books have been bestsellers, and she knows what she's talking about. She doesn't rely on rumors and speculations, facts, much like my YouTube channel. We deal with the facts. And the facts in this case are, no one 
saw Chiron leave the home. No one saw Chiron at school. No one saw Chiron the night before. And no one has seen Chiron since. The last person who's seen Chiron alive or anywhere again was his stepmother. His mother, biological mother, Desiree Young, believed solely and truthfully, you know, to his, his heart, much as she, she didn't want to believe it initially, she believes now that the stepmother did something to Chiron. She knows where Chiron is. So today, we take a moment out of our lives and we sit in peace and we say a prayer and we think to ourselves, if this happened to one of our loved ones, to one of our children, would anybody come to our aid? The Multnomah County Sheriff's Department has never charged anyone with the disappearance of Chiron. They say that today, 10 years later, they are still vigorously working on the case just as much as they were 10 years ago. Chiron will soon turn 17 years old. And no one knows where he is but his stepmother. Thank you for joining me today. And you stay safe out there.